Hi, welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter, and joining me today is Kim Sandberg. She's one of my educators. And Kim, people can obviously see that you're a little younger than me, and you like to do more modern quilting. Not yes. that the my age doesn't like to do it, but you are really into it. Yes. Or improvisational quilting. Yes. And so that's what today is all about. Yes. Is improv. So mm -hmm. you've done improv in piecing. Yes. As well as the quilting. Yes. So let's start about the piecing. Okay. Let's talk about this a little bit. So this is a project that I actually started last year and it was a challenge from my local guild. And we were given a block each month to make traditional blocks like uh, courthouse steps, log cabin, uh, plus signs, crosses. So they gave you and you said that's what you're gonna do and then you choose your own fabrics. Yes, you okay. choose your own fabrics, but we had an extra kicker thrown in. We were challenged to do this entire thing not using rotary cutters to use scissors, I know, I know. So we were striving for a way to open up a little more creativity and have a chance to look at quilting from a different perspective. So you'll notice that my lines aren't perfectly straight and things are kind of filled in, they fit in. So when you use the scissors, did you use a ruler at all to mark anything? No. Or you just started cutting? I just started cutting. I would eyeball it and say, hmm, I want to make that about yay wide and I would start okay, cutting. Okay, so this is your first block mm -hmm. and that, so you just cut out mm -hmm. and then... I cut out a square. And I can see they're not accurate. Yeah, they're not. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's what it's that's, to that's be. how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little freer, more organic filling. Okay. And then you can see I just added strips, and I I did try to cut um, each you know kind of uh, block of strips about the same size. Okay. But I mean, you can see that they're not yeah, perfectly. Right here. I mean, this one's much thinner Absolutely. than these ones are. But I really like the look it gives the piece. So when you start cutting with the scissors, and you just sew that on, and then you kind of squared up. Mm -hmm. With the scissors, you never pull out a rotary cutter mm -hmm. or ruler. No, no, we off. did it. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of this, uh, if I was to flip this over and you were to see the back, a lot of my seam allowances are a little crazy because I did not. Yeah, we actually have one here we that you can look one. at the back Let's of it. First of all, look at the yeah. front. So like you can this. see. So you have the same that block yeah. that you were talking about. Yep. And then as we look, look on the back, you can see that my oh. seams are a oh, little, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're not, they're not exactly straight. You can see where I actually used the seam to kind of straighten things up oh, okay. on the front to create a straight line rather than cutting it that way. Okay, let's move this back away yeah. again. All right, I can see some fun things that I, as a more structured quilter, would do like if I were the you know these blocks you can put a motif in mm -hmm. it but uh, and then this has gives me a vision of what I could do straight line quilting right. there and, right. and a lot you know I've you've got some, but half square triangles half square triangles but this one kind of yeah. is a little well you can see these these three blocks right here this one this one and this one were actually ones that were left over from another project. Okay. And so I just pulled them out and used them. And this one was a bit larger. And so I just trimmed it down. Totally you, lost my point, but that's okay. Do you have any of this fabric in this quilt at all? I, you know what? I actually don't think I do. I think that that was kind of one that I just threw in because it but you can. seemed to fill. And exactly. It, it's solid fabrics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of these fabrics that you've chosen are solid, mm -hmm. but you do have. A few. You know, a little bit. This is, you know, print. as you come over to this block, mm -hmm. I see that you've got a lot of print Yeah, here. and this one actually was a little bit of a starting point. Um, we had done an exchange on the first night when we introduced the idea of improv. Everyone bought, brought scraps, like a little baggie of scraps, uh -huh. and we traded them around. So these ones here that are prints, and some of like the other prints that I have okay. out here. So I kind of pulled those out. And then I used a lot of solids because I like 
solids to kind of calm <laughs> the craziness right, that putting right. all of the patterns together and your can create. Your quilting shows better with exactly, solids too. Exactly. And I'm about the quilting, so. So did they give you any um, uh, rules, I hate to say rules, but did they give you any rules on colors, like you can nope. use three colors or three prints or nope. four or five, you can just start pulling it yep. all in. We we were absolutely able to use whatever colors we wanted to. There was no limited palette. I used uh, four different kind of sets of colors and when I started putting them together, the original idea was to do one large quilt. Well, I laid them out and I did one in greens, I did one in orange, Let's oranges. Let's pull this orange one yeah. over here again. And I laid, I had them laid out. So here's my orange one, which I haven't quilted yet either. And then I've got one that is done in blues, which is here behind us. Right. And then I've got another one that is done in reds. And so <clears throat> let's pull the red yeah. one over. And this one is quilted. And I've had, I had a lot of fun doing this one. And I had these all laid out on the floor. And I asked my husband to come up and take a look. And normally he is so non-opinionated about anything. But he walked up and he said, oh, those are awesome, I love them. And he goes, look, it's like winter, spring, oh. summer, and fall. So I That's knew right. then that I needed to leave them separately because I want them to actually hang as a grouping. Okay, winter, so spring, were, you, summer, were fall. you planning on sewing it all together? Yes. One? Oh, okay. I was. I was planning on putting like a gray fabric between each mm -hmm. of them to kind of break it up. But once again, improv reared its head and said no. Let's leave these separate pieces and let's make this into more of a grouping right. of quilts rather a than a wall. large quilt. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's that's kind of how okay, I ended so up with the colors. Okay, so the one thing I'm seeing here is that there's a lot of dimension here mm -hmm. that you're using two layers of batting. Yes, I am. I am. I absolutely love to use a layer of either 80-20 or cotton, and this one is 80-20. And then I'm using a layer of wool on the top because it just really makes it pop. Okay, so this... Yeah, you can really see, and yet you've laid a lot of this down with mm -hmm. stitching, and it's fine too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, another thing that I'm seeing is we might as well go here while we've yeah. got it, is the way that you have, you've not bound them. No. You have faced them. Yes. Tell me the purpose of that. So I wanted the quilting to fall off the edge and not necessarily come to an abrupt edge like normal traditional uh -huh. binding mm -hmm. would. I wanted it to you to feel like when you look at it, it just keeps going. Continues it on. just keeps going. Right. Especially where these are pieces that are gonna hang on the wall next to each other rather than all be in a quilt together. So, yeah. Okay, so back to, I'm gonna move this aside. Okay. I don't think, well, I can even see it here. Uh, when you're finished quilting, they're mm -hmm. not real square, are no, they? No, they aren't. No, they aren't. So you can then, see. Yeah, it kind of falls yeah. off. and So then you're going to square everything mm -hmm. up. So they're with a ruler or a rotary? Yes, cutter? actually <laughs> I did. I did. This is probably okay. where I broke the rule. I did, I did do that. But I will point out, before I squared these up, I actually blocked them twice, where I laid them out on the floor and the carpet, put pins around the edge, okay. got them really wet with a spray bottle so that they would really relax. And I tried to block them as squarely as possible before I trimmed them up. Okay, so with then, a rotary cutter. With a rotary cutter, <laughs> I know, I broke the rules, but I wanted my edges, I wanted when it was hanging on the wall to have straight edges. Right, right, yeah. okay, all right. Yeah. So um, let's, let's move this one aside okay. here for a minute. The next thing, the next choice mm -hmm. probably is your quilting and your thread or yes. your thread. So I've, well, let's actually bring this one back. Yeah, this let's is a good one to look thread. at. Because you have not used just one color of mm -mm. thread here. No, I think I used six different threads actually on this one. And, and I, I used some metallic yeah, in there. I used some metallic. I used some variegated. You can see here it's kind of from orange to red to okay. a pinky color. I've used some pink. Um, I've used some really, this is actually a really light pink, um, a darker pink, and some dark red. Okay. Which, which well, this is a variegated here. I can yeah, see this one. that goes through yeah. the this color or the fabric yeah. and, and it just gives it a whole nother look. It does, doesn't it? It mm -hmm. really pops and it takes a plain piece of the fabric within the design and it creates a secondary design mm -hmm. from that quilting. Okay, so 
talking about design because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going to quilt today yes and we get to decide how we're going to quilt and you can see there's a lot of straight lines yes in this so normally you hear if you've got a lot of straight lines you want to add curves to kind of soften it mm -hmm. but that's not what you've done on any of these no. you are very straight lined all the way through that's a modern technique yes and so it's wait a minute I do see a little curl. a little we've got a little bit of curl up here I wanted to throw in just a little bit of curve a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop here at the top just an afterthought just of that. an afterthought and it actually it's one of those things I I ended up wrapping quite a bit of it but that's okay that's okay it's just kind of fun uh, so I wanted to play with the idea of what I like to call straight ish lines kind so, of like the piecing right right kind of like hey, the piecing I didn't so, use uh, rulers wait, I got to show you yeah, something yeah. this is called straight ish <laughs> so this here I said did you mean to do this this here is curved and curved and yet the quilting part is very straight. Yeah, yeah. And it's, this is where so I, I, I like that. I, the curves I cut with my scissors and you can see that they are very much not straight, <laughs> probably not even quite straightish. Uh, but I wanted to do some quilting over the top that would kind of juxtapose against that a little. So I did, I did use yeah. uh, Mark to create some X's there. Okay. So, all right. So the, the great thing about this is, is that no matter what sewing machine or quilting yes. machine you own, you can do the piecing mm -hmm. and you can do the quilting. Absolutely. So if you don't have a machine that has horizontal and vertical channel no. locks, you can yeah. do it on your, in your, on your sit down machine. Absolutely. On your on just long a regular arm long arm. Right. If you want to have a little more control over how straight the lines are, I would just use your put your ruler base on and get a straight ruler out and use that to help you create some straighter lines. Um, I really like the look though of like some of these areas where I have lines that I did that are not so straight. They okay. add a little texture. Okay. And some of my corners are a little curved and that's okay. That's okay. It adds another layer, another design layer to so my improv. One of the things that I really like about this that I'm seeing is you attacked each block rather than saying, mm -hmm. okay, I'm doing an edge to edge and I have to go all the yes. way across. You yes. attacked this block and that's all you had to work yep. with. So if you were working on a domestic machine mm -hmm. or your long arm sit down machine, mm -hmm. you could just work that little block. Yes. Yes. And it's manageable, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It is. And I intentionally did that because I wanted the quilting to have kind of the same feel as the piecing. Because when I was piecing this, I was not uh, like um, strip piecing uh -huh. or, or, you know, chain piecing. It was very much, I did one block at a time. So I wanted to give that same attention to the quilting where I use one, I just quilt one block, focus on one block. And I may focus on one block with one specific thread and then move on to another block with that same mm -hmm. thread and then come back to that block with another thread, but I'm still focusing on one block okay. at a time. Okay. Yep. All right, I'm gonna move this aside because okay. back to this piecing part. Mm -hmm. This was your first block. Yep. Okay. Um, when you started that and then added, added, I can see that you've had to add maybe some little yep. extra pieces, fillers, fillers mm -hmm. to make it work. Yes, to get it to be the size that I wanted it to be. Um, I probably on this, uh, this actual quilt, I think I had maybe seven blocks to start with. And you can see I've got some big strips. Yeah, like this is a block, this is a block. This these are yeah this is a block this is a block a lot of these ones that are straight pieces or or even like this one that's stacked together i that's I, a filler it's a filler it's a filler and what i did was i had laid everything out and looked at it and i'd kind of arranged it how i wanted to and then i figured out okay i need I need roughly, I'm gonna eyeball it two inches to fill in there. And so I got out my scrap box and I started grabbing pieces and just sewing them together and creating some fabric that I could then trim okay. to fit in that space. Okay, did you, <laughs> did, 
Sorry, this is a joke between us because <laughs> this is not my type of PC. No. <laughs> but, but I really appreciate it. Right. I love what right. what is done here, and yeah. I love the concept of this this freeing up. Yes. But we laugh about it. Yes. Take a deep breath, Vicky. Take a deep breath. <laughs> so, um, in your class or in your group that mm -hmm. you did. Did they have you do each one of the blocks, and then after all the blocks were put together, then you started adding those fillers, or did yes. you? Okay. Yes, we did. So we had a block. Just like a block of the yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, and essentially this was our block of the month. We had a block of the month for eight months, and then the ninth month they gave us a, a outline of a way that you could put the blocks together if you wanted to. Did you? And you like I said, I did it. I did it because <laughs> I laid like I, I I laid all of my blocks out and I could not bring myself to mash all the colors together. I liked I liked too much the way of having um, each small quilt have the uh, cohesion of focusing on one major color rather than having all of them together. Okay. So. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. That's good. So now we're through that process yes. and uh, we'll come back in just a minute with all of our threads yes. and we will be ready to quilt and figure out how to do this, do this quilting. And like I said, we can do this yeah. or you can do this on any type of machine, but today we're doing it on our forte and we're doing it with the Pro Stitcher, yeah. but not the way you think the Pro Stitcher yeah. is. So yeah. we'll get our threads and we'll be right back. <laughs> Well, Kim, we've, you've chosen threads, and yes. you've got a wide variety of threads yes. here. I mean, you've got a gold that I think, well, I think that'll probably go over here, yeah? Yeah. Or you may just put it over here. Yeah, huh? yeah. In the black or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, definitely some greens. Yes, yes. Green Green is obviously my main color, but I wanted to bring in, like, some black Which and some, got. yeah, lighter colors to create a little contrast because I actually want to take... So yeah, in this blue? one that has some blue in it. I thought, you know, we might use it, we might not. I, we'll kind of yeah. see. I think it could be really fun. Um, I actually want to create some pattern, especially in some of these spaces where it's just plain fabric and it's a big... Pattern like feathers? Uh, no, not feathers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th that's that's an idea. We can maybe play around with no, a little I bit. I don't I don't know that I want to put feathers on this, but um, I actually have an idea I've been playing around with, and I've wanted to try creating okay. plaid with oh. thread. So maybe uh, you know, thinking along the lines almost of thread thread painting, right? Doing a little bit of that. So that's why I have such a big selection of threads. I've also got actually right now loaded on the machine two different variegated threads, and I also want to play around a little bit with, uh, we'll probably run two threads at the same time so we get some really oh, bold boy. line quilting with us. So the variegated is the Omni V from mm -hmm. Superior. Yes. And then you're talking about putting, okay, we'll just kind of let, yeah. you, let you know what she's using yeah. as we go along the as way. We go along. So we need to move these threads. Yep. I can move these aside here. Right here. Over and here. which block are you going to start well, with? I think we should start on this one right here. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, sure. I absolutely <laughs> agree. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that I like to do when I'm doing this improv quilting is kind of the idea, once again, of straight ish lines. Ish. So, that is that ish. 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 <laughs> so, I am, I have my pro stitcher turned on and I have my gears engaged. It means that it's a little stiffer. It's a little stiffer. And what it's going to do is it's going to help me create straight lines without having to use my channel locks or a ruler. Okay, so first of all, mm -hmm. when you say you've got your gears engaged, that means that the gear mm -hmm. is running along the track. Yes. But the motors are not locked. Correct. Because if they were locked, then you couldn't move your machine. Exactly. But you've got that resistance yes. because of the gear running along there. Exactly. Okay. My but gears. You will be driving it yourself. Yes, I'm going to be. I'm going to be driving it. My gears are orange. They're not. Purple. Your gears are orange and your crosshairs are orange. And my crosshairs okay. are orange. Unlike that... if I would be in free motion. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's go ahead and get quilting here. Let's just do Are my... you, do you do stitch in the ditch on this or do you just do straight lines wherever you want them? Uh, let's just see what happens. Okay. How's this that? Is called improv quilting. Improv quilting. We've done the improv piecing yeah. and now we're up to improv quilting. So I'm going to do a little bit of a tack and then we're just going to go ahead and start doing some lines around here. So you're going to piece 
you're going to quilt with just that block. Too. Yep, yep. I'm just going to concentrate on this block. And you know what I think I actually want to do is kind of like a spiral. And we're just going to go a around square spiral. a square spiral. Okay. Why don't we do that? And we're just going to kind of go up along. You guys can see this variegated. Did you just think of that or did you have this already planned? I, you know what? The first block I thought about and then I kind of figured from there we'll see what happens. Okay. So you can see that I'm kind of working my way in. I'm not necessarily kind of like always going a, in. Uh, log cabin. Like a log cabin, exactly. I'm going to come in here to the middle. And you know what? In this middle here, let's add a little something fun. So let's do a little square. How about if we drop down here and do another little square? And then let's start working our way back out of this spiral. And I don't want all my lines to be exactly the same amount apart. So if you'll notice, okay. like here, I'm going to come over closer. Yeah, I do see that. And then I'm going to go down, because that's, that's a pretty big space to leave right. unquilted. So let's come down here, and let's come across here. And then let's go up. And you know what? This looks really fun. I really like this green thread. On the gray. On the gray. So I'm going to do here some lines just back and forth really close together to really kind of lay down some of that thread and create a little bit of a secondary design there. And I just want to do it in this one spot. Oh, not the whole side of that. Nope. Well, that's a I think I'm just going to do it right there. Add a, add a little something there. And you know what, maybe when we change our thread color, we'll come back in and add a little more. Okay. Because I do want a little more quilting than that, but I think to get started, I like All the right. way that that looks. Okay, let's come back over here. And I want to do some, uh, let's see. I want to play with mark a little bit in here. And so when you say mark, this is a free hand record that you're actually marking a spot and creating your own stitch path. Exactly, exactly. And so I'm gonna come here to the record function and then I'm gonna use mark and I'm just gonna use the buttons on my handlebar. Because they Be apply to it now. Exactly. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create kind of an X and I'm going to, let's see, let's clear that really quick because I've got a couple marks on there and we don't want no, you our, my quilting to be too random. And as so you, you're going to use those lines? I am going to use these lines. Now, I'm not necessarily going to do exactly the same uh, distance between course. each one. It's improv quilting. Because it's improv quilting. We're going to have a little fun with this. So we're going to come down to here. And then we're going to go up to there. Oh, thank you. I was going to say, yeah, be sure to hit your refresh. So you can see what so you're you doing. So you can kind of see what you're doing. Exactly. And then you know what? We're going to come up here. And because I want to make some X's to go back, oh, okay. I'm going to kind of look at my screen as I do this and see where and see where I'm going and kind of make some X's along here. So I, you know, and I could do this just with free motion, but I like that well, when I do it with a mark, it makes a straighter line because it's from point to point. Right, and you're going diagonal, so right. it's harder to get a straight line going exactly. diagonal. So exactly. So you, you're using the best of both worlds here. Yep, yep. You've got it. Now, you didn't go all the way down because part of this is inside. Right. So you'll go down and so, finish that later. Yeah, well, yeah. And maybe we'll do some more X's and maybe we won't. We'll just see what oh. happens. Okay. Oh. So if you look here at my screen, you can see I didn't do true X's. They're kind of right. just curving back and Improv. forth. So should we go ahead and quilt that out? Yes. See how it looks? Let's do this. So I'll quilt down and then I'll go all the way back up. Yep. And let this run. Does it matter? Do you change your stitch length or what, what stitch yes. length are you doing? So I believe I have this set right now at like a 12, but every time, one of the things I challenged myself to do when I quilted the other ones, every time I change my thread color, I change my stitch length. So that it just gives, it might not be something that everyone would notice, but it's going to give the quilts a little more right. texture and fill. I love what I'm seeing here. Do you like that? Yes. Yeah. I love it with those lines. Isn't that, that fun? That fabric, it just gives a different look. Now, I see that you've got some big triangles here. Yeah. 
And that's okay to leave just like it is? Absolutely. Or would you go and do something different No, there? you know what? I think, I think I like that for right now. What I do want to do is I want to come and put a line. Maybe uh, a stitch in the yeah, ditch. Yeah, stitch. Mm, stitch in the ditch, ish. Ish. <laughs> it's the ish. It's the ish. Oh, okay, so, so let's come on down. Now. And you know what? I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to go across, and we'll go back up. Okay. Wow, this is just like freeing. Yes. Just do what you want. Okay. Do what you want. So where we'll are you going ahead. now? Well, why don't we come over here to that these green? ones here. I like yeah. that. Because of this, I want some up and downs here. Okay. Let's do okay. some up and downs then. Up and downs. Does that make up sense? Up and downs. Absolutely. So we'll do that and we'll come over and we'll go up. And once again, keeping the idea of improv, I'm not going to do okay. these. Okay. I knew you'd do that. Yeah. And you'll notice that my lines aren't perfectly straight, and that's okay. We want everything to just kind of have a little bit of a, yes. that improv fill. And you know what, I think I'm gonna do them a little tighter inside okay. this dark one, just to bring it out. And do you like how that variegated is looking yes, on there? Yes, I do. It's bringing out a little that's bit a really of a good color for that green. It is, isn't it? So let's do a wider one. Let's do one closer together. But you can see how I'm just making decisions on the fly right. as I go. Okay, now that you're on the fly. <laughs> I'm on the fly. I think this is the next one. You think you this is the next mm -hmm. one? I think so too. I think, what do you think? Should we come down and let's oh, extend and it out. Okay. Should we? I'm, let's take this whole area and okay. not just play with this. So. I want to accentuate the plus sign here. Oh, you're going right down the center yeah. of it. Yeah, why not? Okay. Let's we'll drive this back up. How cool does that green look against that black? Mm -hmm. And just let it fall off the edges. Let's come down here. And let's do some more. Just across. Then let's come up here to the middle, because like I said, I want to accentuate the piecing that I did here. So let's do a little bit of that, just right there. And then we'll go ahead and run that back across. And so that, I see that we've got something happening yeah. here. Um, we've got a little open space there. Would you do this open space by itself or would you include all of this with it? I want to include all of this with it. I want to treat this whole area as one block. Okay. So why don't we come up here and let's go down and let's go in here and do just a little bit of some quilting to kind of... Put a little box in yeah, there. Yeah, put a little box in there. Why not? Let's do that. Let's put a little box in there. I like Let's the go way up you here. think here. <laughs> well, it's kind of the idea of uh, accentuating what's already there, but mm -hmm. at the same time adding something a little different. So we'll just go through and do that and give that a little bit of fun. Now, is that it, or will you come back with a different thread color? I think we need color? to come back with a different thread color in here. I think we need to add another, another thread color. if you were to color. choose a different thread color, uh, I think I would go with something darker, maybe. Darker, like this. This, this, right this could work really good here. Yeah. Okay. Should we switch, or do you want to keep? Should we quilt a little more with Let's this? Let's quilt color? a little more with your green. Okay. But I really want to see how you implement a different thread color. Bringing the different colors uh -huh. in here. Okay. So you'd go through this whole quilt, maybe. Yep. And with this one color. Yep. And then go choose another and. Yep, and that's exactly, that's exactly what my, kind of my idea here is, is to, to use one color and then switch. Because okay. I don't, I don't want to switch thread colors every uh, project. Right. So let's just do thread some more block. up and downs. And I want these to give a little bit of some variance in creating some of these little squares over here. Oh, okay. Do you see what I'm doing? Right. I'm always trying to find something that can give uh, an interesting secondary design mm -hmm. with the quilting. So you can kind of see what I'm doing there. So you had mentioned earlier to mm -hmm. me about a plaid. 
This is yes. not what you're talking about. No, is it? no, not yet. So where are we going to do that? Um, I actually was thinking of doing the plaid okay. up here in the black. What All do right. you think? Yep, that sounds great. Let's. I like the way that works. Do you like those? Mm -hmm. Kind of adds a little bit of a fun touch Boy, to it. This really frees you up. Yeah. You can just. You know, and, Absolutely. and the problem, the thing is, there's not a mistake in this. No, no. It's, I meant to do it, mm -hmm. and or if I didn't mean to do it, I'm going to make it a design, a choice. new design choice. A new design choice, exactly. Okay, so let's come up here, and let's play around with making some plaid. Oh, I really like how that turned I out. I do, too. Do you like that? And that yes. kind of plays with the shapes that are there. Okay, so a, traditionally a plaid is straight one way and then straight the other way. So let's just play with this and let's lay down some thread. All right. I was going to say, if you want to grab and help me quilt. Ooh, yeah, well. Should we pass off? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just come across here. And those ones were kind of about the same width, so I want to go a little lighter on this one. Are you changing that one? Yeah. Okay. Let's come down here. We'll make that one a little narrower. And then let's come down. And let's go across here. So, Kim, even though the thread is a variegated thread of mm -hmm. greens, mm -hmm. uh, it looks green on here, but yes. I can see where the lighter or the deeper, mm -hmm. well, the brighter, that's the brighter. what it is, the brighter colors, you can yeah. see them. And so I think this plaid is really going to be awesome with that. It's going to show kind of a different dimension. Yeah, it's going to have some real texture and add some real texture to the quilt. Okay. So um, I think we should switch thread colors. What do you think? Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. You're saying that you're not going to do the whole thing in plaid in this? Uh, no. You're, no. I'm, I think I'm good I'm, for it. Let's, let's, let's switch some thread. Okay. We'll be right back. All right, Kim, you've changed threads. Yes, I have. And it's, it's still variegated, yes. deeper colors. Deeper colors. So let's add some more to our plaid, and then we're going to go back and kind of fill in some more spots because we've got a different color thread. Okay. okay. So let's go ahead and start over here. Um, and we'll do some more straight lines. And then I want to do some lines that are going to go across too, uh, up and down, I should say. So. Oh, oh, you're taking. So I'm going to go ahead and do one there. And then I'm going to come and do one really close to where I quilted that other one. That's pretty dark. You don't hardly it even is. see it. Huh? You, don't, you don't see it as much, do you, on this black? But, but that's okay. There. It's you, there. You, you do if you stand up yeah. on your tippy toes and see yeah. it. <laughs> and really, really look for it. So let's do that right there, close. I'll come down and do this other one. Whoa, that one's like right on top of each other, which is okay. Because you can do ish. Yes. Right. Ish is totally. Straight ish. Straight ish is or great. Crooked ish. Crooked. Crooked ish. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. Okay. So now we've got some good ones there. Now let's go back and put in, start building a little bit of that plaid element. And I want to come up. Oh, let's go up to the to edge. The Why not? Let's do that, okay? Might as well. It'll get it quilted. Yeah, exactly. And I like that color yeah. across uh, my other uh -huh. options up here. So... There's and a section. And by having those gears on is really helping you do that straight line quilting. Yep, it does, it does. And you can see that I'm kind of going off the edge here yeah, down into the that. spray. And you're meaning to do I that, I am aren't you? meaning to do that. That was, that was very intentional after I did it the first time, of course. Okay. Uh. <laughs> so. And you're short up at the top Yep, there. I'm short a little bit there. I'm just gonna come up here. And then I think we'll do one more grouping down here of two, three, and then we're going to go back and do a little bit of filling in. So you can see there how okay, wait, it's wait, kind wait, of... Wait, 
you just said we're going to go back and do some filling yeah. in with the same thread color or something different? With, with this thread color that I've got now, we're going to go back and okay. add a little more to okay. the designs that I already have and then quilt some additional areas. Okay. But you can see here now we're starting to build that idea of plaid. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as we continue to change thread colors, you'll see more of it. Okay, so, okay. yeah. I'm just really anxious to see what you're okay. going to do right there. Well, I was going to say, you pick the spot you want me to do next. Okay, so, yep. so right here with the mm -hmm, triangles. Mm -hmm. I is think, that the thread color you want? Yeah, okay. I, I think it'll look great, especially these are lighter colors right, and this is a darker. Threads? Yeah, go for it. These are darker. Um, this is a darker thread and these are some lighter colors, so it'll pop a little more. I think we should use Mark again here. Oh, okay. So, did I get your bobbin thread cut? I'm not sure I did. I, you know what? I don't think you did, but that's okay. We'll make it work. We'll make okay. it work, right? That's what this is all about. So we're going to come to record, and I'm going to clear what I had on my screen. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in some marks here. And I want to kind of, this time, let's, yeah, go through and maybe do a little bit of almost echo quilting just for something different. Let's do that. We'll come up here, go over, and then I want to create the same kind of a fill oh, in this open space. Yes. Like I have another uh, half square triangle there, even though I don't. And we'll just keep, now we can go back and kind of build. So I'm going to look at the screen a little bit and use it to help me decide exactly where I'm going to place these. So we're kind of creating maybe a little bit of an echo. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? You're almost like trying to put some type bond in there. Almost. Oh my gosh, you're right. It does. It looks <laughs> like I am. Good eye. Yes. So we're going to do down to there. And then I'm going to go back to my beginning point. And then we can do our, and it's going to go ahead and stitch that out. And we'll see, we'll see what we end up with, and then we'll kind of build on that top of that. That almost is Anne right there. It is. Maybe we need to go back and cross the A. <laughs> Anne. <laughs> it works. Or maybe we'll do some other lines to kind of... Trim your threads there for Change you. things up a little bit. Yeah. So you can see there, once again, I didn't line anything up. I just kind of... Played a little bit with where those shapes ended up at. Right. But I, I kind of like that. Oh, wow, I do too. It gives it a little something fun. Uh, let's let's head on up here and let's do some lines through this piece. I want to do once again like I did over here where I did a bunch of lines really close together. Oh, okay, where you did on the log mm -hmm. there. The courthouse steps. Courthouse. That's probably enough. So we'll do that. And then I want to come and put a little bit of this color into this block up here, the uh, plus sign oh, that we all had. Right. So let's go in here and let's add a little bit of this color. And I'm going to put a little box out here and let's put a little box out here. So what do you think I'm adding? You can see how I'm just layering. I am using. actually really loving this. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to come up here, and I want to do another another set of lines inside this courthouse steps, too, with this darker okay. thread. At least some of them. So you know what? Maybe we just should do them on the outside here. What do you think? Right. Let's do a little bit of a... Maybe emphasize the L shape out here uh -huh. on the outside. Mm -hmm. Let's add a little texture. I can see the more you do this, the more ideas that come to your yes. mind. Yes, yes, absolutely. I feel like this is the type of quilting that when I start out doing it, I always just kind of want to say to myself, okay, um, I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to quilt for an hour and a half and when I get done, I'm done. And I don't right. start out saying this is specifically what I want to do. Right. 
So let's pick another area and do a little more, and then we can do I'm some I'm really more. kind of partial to these two these? blocks right here. Okay. So I think that. Okay. Let's bring these down. You know what I think we should do here is take the idea of one of these blocks that I've pieced, and let's make a block in here that's kind of like a pieced block. So maybe okay. a little bit like a log cabin okay. or something like that. So we'll bring the machine down here. And let's make like a log cabin shape. I actually saw somebody not too long ago I that showed me how to do this. But I think it's kind of a fun nod to some of the oh piecing word, that yes. is in this quilt. But the one thing I'm going to do is put a line through the middle so that I can get over here to my other one. What kind of a block should I do in this one? Well, that's what I was just thinking. Uh, you could do this block like you've got over here. Okay. So we'll do, this one is kind of like a... Uh, I, I think this would be kind of cool to do this here. Okay. Could so, that? yeah. And so, yeah, that would be your start because that's where you're at. Yeah. Here, this is where you're at and put that first and then build around it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. I think that will totally work. So, pull up that bottom So, before we do it though, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, a square and a square? Mm-hmm. Oh, that could be really fun too. But, uh, just thinking, yeah. square and a square, where you'd put a square here, mm -hmm. and then another square, which is turned kind of from the like other this. way. Does that yeah, or we could do it someplace else. We could, we could totally do that here. I just, if we're going to do something with diagonal lines, I want to do it with Mark. Oh, because absolutely. Because once again, I'm in with with my gears engaged. It's a little hard to drive in that right. diagonal, diagonal direction. And this, so. you're, you're not going to use a ruler at all. No. Nope. So your spacing, you may not piece, you may not get right to the center, which might be kind of cool to be yeah. improv. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what? Let's actually start at this point right here where I left to, off. For the marking. And you'll notice that that is not in the middle. It no, is it not in the okay. middle. So, so we've got that. I think, I think that's great. Ooh, see, I'm, so, getting, I'm starting I know. to think. I know. You are. You are. I'm going to bring you. <laughs> I'm going to get that's you over really there. Scary. So I'm going to go back to record and then mark, and I'm going to hit clear because I need to clear off the last design okay. that I did. And let's do that. Let's, let's go ahead and let's create, and we'll find the middle-ish. Ish. It's this ish thing, improv and improv ish. <laughs> improv ish, I love it. And then we'll come back to here and we'll refresh again and we'll come back up. Now I know where my start point was there, so I'm going to be able to make that, but I mean, as you can see looking at that pro stitcher screen, that is not a square square. <laughs> do you do another square and a square? Yeah, let's do another square. So, you so I need to come up to like here. Uh -huh. So, and this is where I'm looking more at the screen than I'm actually looking at right, the... Right, because you have to match that up. Yeah. No, I like this idea. This is fun. Oh, this is... And you is know what? I'm going oh, okay. gonna, gonna, gonna to go up a okay. little bit. We can't, can't have all straight lines. <laughs> well, that's a straight line. Okay, I think yeah. you need to do more, one more square. And I square. think so. I think so. So let's come over here to our center-ish. And once again, we'll come over here to the side. Get that lined up. Do one down here, and let's go over this way a little oh. bit. Okay. Okay. And then we'll put one here, and we'll go back up to that top. You know what? I really like this. I'm glad that you picked that design. I was hoping. I was hoping for some how, input. How big is? It? Let's measure this and see. So we're gonna just put our little measure. We're gonna turn on the measure, mm -hmm. and we're gonna go see how. That's two inches. Mm -hmm. The Almost wide. two and a half, yeah. Two and a half. Do you want to put another one in? Let's do. All yeah, right. I think we should. I Thank think you. we should. <laughs> I can take a hint. Okay. Okay, let's do, we'll do one there, and we'll do one there. Clear up a little bit higher. You yeah. want, oh, oh I yeah, like it. Want... You're, you're pushing me. I love it. And let's, let's do this last one so it's really kind of okay. wonky. How's that? Okay. What do you think? All right. I'm I, I, I like it. I like it. Okay. So let's go ahead and I know, take a deep breath. It's going to, it's going to quilt out beautifully. We'll save that design and put it in our pro stitcher file. Oh, we totally should. <laughs> we'll call it Vicky square in a square and everybody will go, hmm? Uh, yeah, she's square. <laughs> 
So there's our, okay, here we go. Oh, and don't you love how that darker thread I just do. really pops and how yes. it's got a little bit of that lighter color in there? That really creates something fun out of what would have just been... Nice. Yeah, we definitely needed that last one. Yep, I agree. I agree. That was a good idea. I hadn't thought of using the uh, the measure there. But so. something's got to come in with a different color in these Yeah, I totally agree. You know what? Let's do let's do another thread change really quick. All right. Um, why don't we put that either the gold or the black? You choose. And let's let's do a because we've worked with a bunch of greens here. Let's do some gold. Okay. okay. We'll be back in just a minute. Okay, we've changed threads. Yes, we did. Gold. I'm loving this. I'm yeah. really seriously loving it. Yay! So I think we need some gold here. Yes, I do. And then I think in that plaid. I totally agree. Okay. I totally and then agree. And we have one more block that I want you to try. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ready to go. So I want to come and put some of the gold in here. And I think what we want to do is because this is a square and a square, let's make a square around the outside of it with this plaid. What do you think? Okay, are you going to mark it or are nope. you going to? Nope, play? we're just going to do it this oh. way. So I think we're going to kind of take the idea of we're not being super exact. This is an ish. This is an ish. And we're going to build a little bit of a box around it like that. And then I'm going to move this up here. And I'm just going to kind of travel along the seam to get that out of the way. Okay. But you can see how we just kind of created an extra little box around that. I like adding so that. So, that. not exact, mm -hmm. but it is another square. It's done. It's another done. square. Yeah. I think that that one's done. I like it. Me, this is my block. This is Vicky's block. <laughs> Vicky's block. First. Okay. Okay. So, let's move on over here to this plaid. Because I definitely want to put a fair amount of gold in there because it's really going to shine against this okay. black. All right. Let's do okay. it. So, I'm just going to come about right here start stitching go ahead and drop in and once again we're just going to start out in this direction wow that's that really screams gold doesn't it yeah it does doesn't it but can you see how it gives a nice contrast to what is in the rest of the quilt now especially now that i've put all this green in here right. it gives a little bit of a extra element i'm going to move on the other okay. side of you here let me Oh, I love this. Is this fun or what? Yes. Seeing this, I love, I love really laying these lines in here, using a lot of thread. I almost think of it as thread painting a little bit. Yeah. Creating that extra element that I didn't do in the piecing. So this is our uh, St. Patrick's Day quilt, right? Yeah, yeah, you know what? It Got should be. our pot of gold. Yep, our pot of gold. All of our green. Our green with our pot of gold at the end. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I'm going to lay down just a little bit more of this gold thread. Now you're moving the machine pretty fast. I and am. By doing that, that really helps give you that straight line, doesn't it? It does. You actually have a lot more control keeping it straight but with the gears engaged. You don't want to so fast that you outstitch your stitch length. Right. But you do want it, you know, that helps. If you're doing little wobbly, slow stitches, it is wobbly. Exactly, exactly. And that that is what I very much wanted to stay away from. So. Oh, I now, love are you really seeing the plaid yeah. starting to come alive here? Yes. And I am, I am cruising pretty fast here. Yeah. I start getting in the groove, and I mm -hmm. start flying. I think I'm actually going to put a little bit less gold going, going across. across. Okay. What do you think? Right. Yeah. I've got just a couple yeah, more lines. Yeah, I think lines. that's perfect. What do you think? But, so 
So you can see now with my idea, I took a piece that was just a filler, mm -hmm. and I've actually now turned this into almost a focal piece for the quilt. Really? Because this really pops out now, doesn't yeah, it? it does. Yeah. It does. So should we come down here and play a little bit with the print? Uh, yes. Yeah, so are you going to do gold or are you going to change colors? Let's, let's stick with the gold to start okay. with. Okay, Kim, I traded places with you yes. because... <laughs> I'm at the end of the quilt. <laughs> You're at the end of the quilt. You're just pushing me off here. <laughs> Um, we're going to go ahead and, and do this block here, which yeah. is kind of a log cabin in a corner type. What do yeah. they call those? Yeah, uh, like a half log cabin. Or This is one where I think what I did was I actually had a log cabin made, and then I cut it because I didn't like the way it looked, and then I put this other strip oh, okay. in it to kind of make the plus sign. It's kind of the idea of if you don't like it, Cut it apart and repurpose. With your scissors. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. With my well, you can see I did not. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I love yeah. it. So you're going to treat this as one whole block, yes. not just this no. little part. No, let's do this as one whole block. And I think what I actually want to do on this is kind of what I call a square meander. So I'm just going to kind Ooh. of come in here and make squares. Mm -hmm. And I've still got that awesome gold thread on here. So I just want to kind of do a square or a rectangle, depending on what the piece would dictate. So, so mm -hmm. you're, okay, I'll just let you feel it. You're not really piecing each corner, you're just mm -mm. doing an overall edge to edge. I'm, yeah, I am kind of doing a little bit of an edge to edge here. Okay. Just kind of filling it in. And then I figure we'll go back and maybe kind of create some, borders inside some of this and you know what this little spot right here I want to kind of make a whole big one let's come over here and kind of echo that a little bit same sort of a thing okay I I'm got just you back over there yep I'm like I said I'm just kind of creating a meander that's going to fill in the space okay without anything being too exact now, are you going to go back over this with any other thread color, or you know are you going to leave it like it is? I think I actually would like to go over. I think I'd like to go over it with a darker thread, maybe. Or, you know what, actually, maybe a lighter thread. Because, because this has a lot of um, pattern in it, mm -hmm. the thread doesn't show up as much. Right. And, you know, maybe if I did a darker thread through the center part here that's lighter, and then I did a lighter thread through some of the darker places. Oh, okay. It would maybe show up a little more. So you more. got two more thread colors to work with. At least, at least. Like I said, I, I do a lot of thread changes on these quilts when I, when I quilt these. They're a lot of fun. So I'm thinking that's, that's kind of my all over. So then you'll come back in and because you've left quite a yeah, open space there. I've left, I've left a big space there, but you know what, I'm not adverse to leaving that either. Um, like I said, where this section has a lot of pattern in it, mm -hmm. no matter what I put in here, unless it has like some really serious heavy thread, like maybe using two threads at once, it's really not going to show as much. Okay, as you've mentioned here. two threads at once. So when you do two threads at once, you're going to put two mm -hmm. cones, bring them up, Mm -hmm. Thread them exactly the same yep. all the way through, and the needle size, will you change your needle? Nope, nope. And I always, I, I have found, I have the best success when I use uh, two threads if I use the same weight of thread. Okay. So if I'm using a 40 weight thread already and I want to add another one, I'll use another 40 weight thread. It doesn't have to be the same fiber content. I've done um, cotton with polyester, but if you use the same uh, thread weight, then your tension usually oh, is spot okay. on perfect without okay. having to, you know, a, make any adjustments. Because if each thread that you're using right now are basically a 40 weight thread, so yeah. you really haven't had to make a, no. much of an adjustment. Nope. Okay, and this, the other thing that you mentioned is because uh, the thread color or the is not showing, when this is on the wall, that texture, I think, yes. is really going to show. It is. It definitely will. And it's one of the reasons why I am not adverse. I don't know if the camera can see that. But yeah. the texture really does show. When I, and it's one of the reasons why I'm actually not adverse to maybe leaving this section just with the little bit of the lighter quilting. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, when it is hanging on a wall, you are absolutely going to see that texture. That's and it will...
complement the piecing and the fabric that's okay, there. Okay, so we have one block here, yes. one area yeah. that whatever you put in is going to show. It's really going to show, so isn't it? So you really got to know. know what you want. And mm. so are you going to put gold in here? I think I should. Right. I want to. I think this is going to be our last block. We could yeah. do the whole quilt here, oh, but yeah. I really do think that yeah. this will be our last okay. and really make it make it make it fun okay I think we should come over here and maybe because I've been playing with so much uh, straight line maybe we should throw some curvy lines in here what do you think do a little loop-de-loop -loop and then put a few straight lines around okay. it should we cool. should we do it okay so I'm I am going to go ahead and disengage my gears now so that I can have that in. so what that means is it takes the white gear mm -hmm. off of the blue track and yep. lifts it up so there's no resistance exactly so i'm just doing some nice free motion and i want to do a little loop-de-loop -loop. Oh. maybe just in this gray just wow that makes it look different and then why don't we go back and put some straight lines through it? Just add okay. something a little. I'm going, it needs something more. It needs something more. So I'm going to go ahead and engage my gears. I'm going to put those gears back down so that once again okay. I can get those straight, straighter lines. And we're going to come, and then let's come down this side. And I think we should stack some squares here. And what I'm going to do is do these so that they're not all... Like a brick? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to explain it. We'll make kind of like a brick here, but I'm going to do them in all different kind of shapes oh, and sizes. Yeah. Maybe this is a little like a video game I played a lot growing up, Tetris, where yes. we had kind of some of the weird shapes that came with that. Mm -hmm. But creating that texture inside that solid so what do you now, think of that? Is this it is this it? Well I think I need to go back and add some other another thread color to this. Maybe put a little bit more gold in a few other a few touches of gold in a few other places, but it's definitely a really, really good start. It is. And if you put some other uh, gold in other places, but in this one you'd put another color. Yeah, I think I think I need to put some black in here, some black and gold, to just create a little bit of contrast, and maybe come in here and just do a small echo inside each of these little do bricks. Do you feel that like it needs any green in it to tie everything in? Uh, you know what? I think I would maybe would take and do a little bit of green along this edge here, just in kind of this border area that I created. And then it would maybe come off into this black because I really love the green on the black because mm -hmm. it's such a good contrast. Yes. That so I think I would. On that. that plaid, I think, is my favorite. It's, it's really oh, fun. Maybe isn't this. It? Maybe, maybe this. Maybe my little no. <laughs> This has been so freeing to oh, me good. to watch this happen because I was with you at an improv class. Yes. And it was it a made, little. It made my heart kind of like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Got to think about that. But uh, this is really fun. This oh. is really, well, you know, good practice. Yes. Good yes. Practice to get your straight lines. Yes. And Yes. And just get that brain yes. into the, the right brain and artsy. Yes, yes. And I, and I feel like even this type of quilting is a little less intimidating because you're not trying to recreate a pattern like right. a quilt a rose or a star. You're just really playing with straight lines. And you don't have to apologize for anything you do nope. because you meant to do it. Exactly. It's That's all intentional. Great. Intentional wow. improv. Well, thank you, Kim. <laughs> you're intentional welcome. improv. <laughs> Ish. We Ish. got new words today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim, for joining us. Yeah. This was so fun to learn this and to, I, I, I've got to try it. Yeah. And I hope you will try it. I hope you will pull out your scraps, your fabrics, and start cutting them with your scissors or find something to, to just try the straight line quilting and have some fun with this. Thank you for joining us today. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of our HQ lives or any of our tutorials or anything that we're doing. So see you next month and have fun improv quilting.